G'day, I'm Rowan from Ferguson Brothers Rail. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the process for designing a small model train layer. We started with some basic requirements that would help drive the design process. Portable, coffee table sized, low cost and simple, resilient and low maintenance, original to inspire imagination in a child's mind or a grown man's child mind. Have two light goes that could be operated simultaneously by the two directors. We really wanted to avoid symmetry to ensure it felt organic and realistic. We wanted to use elevation to give the layout more of a three-dimensional aspect. And by ensuring the engines are not always visible, we create an element of mystery. This would also allow people to focus on other details while the trains are hidden from view. The biggest challenge with the track design was pushing the limitations of radius and gradient on such a small layout. To help crunch these details, we used the demo version of AnyRail software. This was really useful for manipulating track and pushing tolerances as far as we could. Of course, the trains will need to be thoroughly tested before we get too carried away with the scenery. Probably their most vital aspect is the story. There has to be a reason the railway exists. This will be covered in another chapter, but setting a moment and place in time will drive all decisions relating to locomotive choice, structure design, scenery and even lighting. Our train yard and small township will sit at the base of a mountain. The passenger line will ride fairly flat and disappear under the mountain to simulate the train leaving town. The other engine, our mountain train, will ride up a single revolution helix to emerge at the work site, cut into the top of the mountain. From here it will wind back down over a trestle bridge and past the train yard. Once we determined the size of the baseboard, we did some calculations and transferred the design using a grid. Help me the train track. We're using some 16mm builder's ply held flat with 70-35mm structural pine. It's just what we had lying around. Marking compass points on the layout helps orientate the various weirdly shaped pieces used to build up the contours. We're using 6mm ply for the contours because it's flexible to achieve some of the super elevation in the corners. Super elevation is the camber in the track that helps balance the weight of the train as it passes through corners with gradients. We filled and sanded the fly to get them relatively flat before gluing down the cork that the actual track will be pinned to. Cutting on that line there. Cutting on there. That's the way. In the next chapter of Ferguson Brothers Rail, we're going to look at some electronics, soldering in the switches and installing the flexi track. Thanks for watching and catch you later.